Live from my news up here at Desawe in Kanda. This is News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I'm Natalie Fort. A look at the top stories this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paid, GT Bank, and Piccadilly Biscuits. As you have made this statement, in good faith, you should come to the table and find a, a, a roadmap or let's formulate a roadmap to disband it and approve it from our body to politics. Show good faith in anti-vigilante deliberations, the NCCE to the MPP and NDC. A Shaman Member of Parliament sues government for sole sourcing $12.5 million agreement for medical deliveries via drones to fly Zipline Ghana Limited. Also ahead this evening, University of Education Winneba absorbs costs incurred in repairing damaged property after protests by students last month. And in business tonight, Trade Union Congress rejects 50% cut in benchmark values announced by government last week. On the international front, U.S. President Donald Trump designates Iran's elite revolutionary guard corps a foreign terrorist organization. The details of these and much more news coming to you live here on News 360. Stay with us. Remember, you can watch us all across the world on 3news.com as well as on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. In our very first story this evening, TV3 Checks has revealed that there has been an attempted burning of pipelines belonging to the Volta River Authority, the VRA. The lines have been confirmed to be lines that supply fuel to the generating center at the Tema Industrial Area. According to the Tema Fire Command, they spotted flames bellowing from the pipelines area Sunday afternoon. They detected someone had parked using car tires on the pipelines and set them ablaze but they quickly extinguished the fire. Well, we'll stay on this issue a bit further. On the phone lines is Timothy Efum. He's the Deputy Security Re Tema Regional Fire Commander. Hello, good evening, and thanks for joining us here. Good evening, madam. Now, could you tell us how severe the fire on the pipelines were at the time that your team was there? Thank you very much. Um, I must point out that they already have its own fire department. Uh, we have the Department of National Fire Service that's now supporting them in their operations. And so yesterday, we the fire the outside the, the yard of the vein area. Uh, upon arriving at the scene, we realized that it's part time that somebody or a group of people have parked on the line supplying fuel to the vein array for uh, thermal generation that has been set on fire. And so quickly it was put off. And um, some damage was caused to the pipeline, but as to whether it will affect supply to the station, that one, the vein array itself. To so it's unclear as of now as to whether it would affect supply, you're saying? Exactly. But aside that, what other serious damages can we expect as a result of the fire? Yes, apart from the pipeline, no other damage was caused. But like I said, it is for their engineers to assess the situation and know um, the extent of damage caused to the pipeline. Thanks. Thanks for the update there. We'll follow up in our subsequent bulletins. You're welcome. Our following reports of controversial clauses in a newly drafted public universities bill. A ranking member of uh, on Education Committee of Parliament, Peter Nochu, is saying that the committee will kick against sections of the policy which undermine uh, the autonomy of uh, public universities. Among other things, the draft bill gives the president the power to dissolve and reconstitute the governing council of a public university in cases of emergencies. 
So far, uh, I have not seen the draft bill in its full form. But uh, with the pieces and the bits of information that we have gathered so far, emanating from uh, the draft bill, uh, you will realize that uh, the bill in its form, if it is allowed to pass, is going to have a, a very telling effect on academic freedom of the universities. Because the bill is attempting to take away the autonomy of the universities. Uh, every university in this country is established by an act of parliament. And by that act of parliament, the university is empowered to run it, its own um, activities. It has its own regulations, which they call statutes. So in those statutes, the universities are able to manage their own affairs right from uh, the appointment of a, a vice chancellor to academic work. Once you have institutions backed by Act of Parliament, you should allow those institutions to perform within the law that establishes them. And then what government is to do is once you have your representatives over there, you allow them to monitor and report back to you. It, in the first case, it is the unnecessary interference of government that created the problem. You see it. So, if government backs out of its interference in the affairs of public universities, this situation wouldn't have arisen. Let's stay on this a bit further. Dr. Samuel Nkumban is the Vice President of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, uh, University of Ghana chapter. He joins me on the telephone. I thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nkumban, for your time this evening. Can you hear me, sir? Absolutely. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. First, let me confirm that is it the case that UTAG was not consulted in the drafting of this particular bill? Well, I must say that I... Uh if it comes to drafting of the bill, UTAG was not consulted. Uh, but what, of course, we do know is that if it is going to be something that will be passed into a law, uh, all stakeholders will be consulted. And as we speak, UTAG has not been formally invited by government to discuss the bill in terms of uh, the content and uh, uh, whatever uh, proposition that is within the bill so as for UTAG to make an input. Uh, into the bill. I see. So, uh, emphatically, I should say that UTAC has not been consulted so far in the, in the, in the process of uh, leading to where we are today. I ask this because uh, the, the uh, University of Health and Allied Sciences and the University of Development Studies, according to the Ministry of Education, have right. written their responses to this particular bill. And I, I, I suspect that they are lecturers are members of UTAG. So is it the case that individual universities were consulted and UTAG as a union was left out of this? Well, what it is is the case that uh, I suppose the vice chancellors of the various universities were given copies of the bill. I'm also aware that the vice chancellors requested from their heads of department for comments, which were supposed to be submitted to the vice chancellors for them to forward to uh, the ministry in relation to this. But UTAG as an organization and as a major stakeholder in this uh, discourse, we've not been called formally yet to make our input in relation to um, the deal. So uh, do you have any suspicion as to why you weren't consulted or the possibility it would come in the process? Well, I must say that we received the, uh, copies of the draft deal informally, though, from uh, other sources. And UTAC as a body is also looking at the bill in relation to the provisions and uh, possibly will be uh, meeting pretty soon. Usually such decisions as to what our position will be on the bill will be taken by the National Executive Committee of UTAC. And we are yet to convene uh, such a meeting to make our position on the bill known to uh, government. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time, Dr. Kuban. Uh, thank you, Brian. Dr. Samuel Nkuban is Vice President of the University Teacher Association of Ghana, UTAG, the University of Ghana chapter. And uh, th
clear that they say they haven't, uh, in fact, they weren't consulted up until this point in drafting of this particular bill that has raised lots of controversy. Indeed, uh, we're trying to raise Kofi Bento, he's a private legal practitioner, also the vice president of uh, policy think tank Imani Ghana on this particular issue and they, they've raised some questions about this and their position on this particular issue as well. The information, uh, I beg your pardon, Education Ministry has been speaking, the head of public affairs indicating that the University of Health and Allied Sciences and the University of Development Studies, that's UDS, have given responses as to portions of this particular bill that they are not very excited about. So it, it remains to be beg a lot of questions as to why this is the situation. But we'll still be working on the telephone lines to see if we're able to get through to uh, lawyer Kofi Bento on this particular issue. Stay with us. Some other stories this evening. Member of Parliament for Ashamine has sued government for sole sourcing a $12.5 million agreement for medical deliveries via drones to fly Zipline Ghana Limited. Operators of the service Fly Zipline, who have also been joined to the suit, were not the only company providing the service at the time they were awarded the contract. Speaking to journalist in Accra, Ernest Nogwe noted government failed to do due diligence. The services of Fly Zipline, which was subsequently approved by Parliament on December 11 last year. Fly Zipline was supposed to deliver blood, products, medicines, vaccines, and other products to health facilities in the country using drones. Per the $12.5 million contract, Fly Zipline will run over 150 flights per day from each of its four distribution centers. The award of the contract has come with some controversies and won't go anytime soon. It's saying that before you go into single source procurement, you must make public notice. Public notice means that you must publicize it that you are going to enter into this agreement. Is there any company that is available to, uh, I mean, to contract this particular, I mean, uh, contract with you? Now, if there's no company, then you have to apply to the PPA, that is the Public Procurement Authority, to give you approval. Now, the government of Ghana did not do, did not follow Section 42, because we have a lot of entities in the system. During the town hall meeting last week, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia announced operations will start later this month at the first facility at Ominako in the eastern region. But the Sherman MP, N.S. Nogbe, says government failed to do due diligence. We have the Swoop Aero and then DHL in Tanzania, and they are also into this business. So if they had opened it, then it means there's a little competition. And if there's competition, then you realize that there will be value for money because everybody will want to win. Cabinet has given approval for unification of all pension schemes to take effect in 2021, Deputy Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Rekuprobe, says the National Pensions Regulatory Authority is on a drive to engage all stakeholders in this regard. The National Pensions Regulatory Authority was mandated under Act 766 to unify all pensions within five years from the date of ascent on December 4, 28, 2008, in effect. The unification should have been completed in 2014. The various schemes currently in operation in the country have been bedeviled with a myriad of challenges. The Deputy Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Bright Reco Brobe, made this known when he appeared before the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament on the 2014 Auditor General's report. As we speak now, Cabinet has given the approval. So a roadmap has been developed and then we are hoping to unify all pensions in, in the country uh, from this year on. So it is not a system failure. It is something that we have to look at because of the fragmented pension regimes that have been in existence. It was recommended and in fact legislated upon for MPRE to champion that unification. But also appearing before the Public Accounts Committee was a National Film and Television Institute. About two years ago, we had this Bank of Ghana 
hospital, which is situated next to our studio tour. After the construction, we found that it had completely within one of our major studios, which has lecture halls, studios, to the extent that we had to evacuate. Because if we allowed the use, the continued use of the building, we could, there could be a disaster. Answering questions from the committee director of the institute, someone now says the institute is currently struggling with infrastructure deficiency. Now, the Dean of Student Affairs at the University of Education, Winneba, Dr. Kwesi Amponsa, says the university will absorb cost incurred in repairing damaged property after protest by students last month. Dr. Kwesi Amponsa earlier spoke with newsmen after an academic board meeting held at the Winneba campus on Monday. And our correspondent Lucy Ayambila is there. We'll bring you a lot more in our subsequent bulletins. On IMTN video report tonight, our citizen journalist Charles Renner reports on a heap of refuse behind a school uh, in some parts of the Western region. Look at this. You can even see the, the layers in it. They are always breaking down coming down here, scattered all over, the smell, the stench, there are people staying all over. Look at this thing, look at where I'm standing. I would say I'm even somewhere in between the depth or the length. Just look at the top, look at going down. I can't even descend down. I'm even afraid I may roll and end up down there. And that's exactly what happens. Sometimes they break and then they go deep, deep down. In the standard. We need to take it off. We are appealing to STMA. They should come to our aid. There, there is a school behind just this heap. Let's look at this heap. And this school is having about student population of about 1,000. Start from the crutch to JHS 1, 2, 3. They come here to pick all kinds of diseases and send them away. It's, it's really bad. We, we are about to experience the rains. We wouldn't like to be here. Clearly, a worrying situation then. <laughs> but you can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055-1433-044. And do stay with us here on News 360 for the latest from the world of business. Coming up shortly. Hello, good evening and welcome to the Business News segment on 360. My name is Park Asari. The Trade Union Congress, TUC, has rejected the 50% cuts in benchmark values announced by government last week. According to the TUC, the move will increase imports and further depreciate the local currency. Secretary General of the Trade Union Congress, Dr. Yao Ba, who spoke with correspondent Daniel Pokwin Accra, said the 50% cut in benchmark values should rather have been on some selected imported items. The Trade Union Congress TUC was saddened about a 50% cut in benchmark values of imports announced by the Vice President at a town hall meeting last week. But the TUC, after carefully analyzing the tariff regime, said the 50% would increase unnecessary imports. The TUC again argued that a reduction in tariff would affect the strength of the city against the other foreign currencies. Secretary General of TUC, Dr. Yaoba, rather suggested that the 50% should have been on some selected imports. I never expected that we would do a blanket 50% reduction in everything. Mm. I say everything good. that comes to this country. No, I, say it's not good. I don't think it's good for everything. Uh, no, it's too much. Especially for those items you can produce here. Maybe government might have targeted it a bit so that all the things we cannot produce or we don't have the capacity to produce but are good for us. Those ones, if you reduce, it increases standard of living. We need to do more in the area of export. I don't think the policy to reduce tariffs blanket the way they have done it is the best. 
He again said the government should immediately review the 50% cut in import duty. We need to start thinking about import substitution. And if you want to think about import substitution, the way to go is to reduce tariffs. No. The way to go is to impose tariffs within the WTO framework. And we have that right to impose 99% tax on rice and 99% tax on poultry to stop that. And that will encourage Ghanaians to produce these two items right here in this country. In another development, the Trade Union Congress has praised the government for creating 350,000 jobs in the public sector. It also lauded government's efforts in exiting from the IMF program. You know one thing that has happened in 2019, which is the best for this country? Our exit from IMF. Mm. That has given us the free hand to manage ourselves. For the first time in many years, or at least in three or four years, yeah. We are going to see if we are disciplined enough. Mm. And that is why government has established the Financial Stability Council, Council yeah. then the Fiscal Stability Council. Exactly. Now we are expecting the Social Partnership Council, okay. which should be launched very soon, so that employers and labor and government will come together and say, hey, don't go there. In other news, economic growth in sub-Saharan Africa has been downgraded to 2.3% 2, 2 for 2018, down from 2.5% in 2017, according to April 2019 issue of Africa's polls. World Bank has, however, projected a 7.6% growth for Ghana this year, with agriculture, oil and non-oil sectors as the drivers. My colleague George Quainin reports. Economic growth, according to World Bank, remains below population growth for the fourth consecutive year. Although regional growth is expected to rebound to 2.8% in 2019, it would have remained below 3% since 2015. This lower-than-expected overall growth reflects ongoing global uncertainty, but increasingly comes from domestic macroeconomic instability, including poorly managed debt, inflation and deficits. Growth picked up in some resource-rich countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo and Niger. This was due to stronger mining production and commodity prices, which boosted activity alongside a rebound in agricultural production and public investment in infrastructure. In others like Liberia and Zambia, growth was subdued as high inflation and elevated debt levels continued to weigh on investor sentiment. Although the government has forecast an economic growth of 7.2% for 2019, it is a 0.4% reduction of World Bank's projection of 7.6% for same year. We have oil production as the main driver, and mining also, because in 2018, mining picked up and we, we expect that it will continue to do so in 2019. And of course, oil, non-oil production, especially when government policies on agriculture are actually going to be felt much in 2019. Meanwhile, the World Bank has pointed digital transformation as a game changer for Africa. Digital transformation, according to the World Bank, can increase growth by nearly two percentage points per year. The World Bank added, digital transformation can also reduce poverty by nearly one percentage point per year in sub-Saharan Africa alone. If, if you look at the, the process through which our countries have grown in the past, uh, typically, what we have seen was a process of productivity that is taking worker out of the agricultural sector and moving them into the manufacturing sector. This is happening in some countries uh, in the Africa region, but in most of them, what we're seeing is a transition toward the service sector. And the service sector, I think you should think of it as an important source, as an important source of growth. In other news, Head of Public Affairs at the Bank of Ghana, AC Hammond, says the newly printed city notes with security-enhanced features will come with what the central bank said is improved durability and machine readability. She says the new notes will have enhanced security features, improved durability and um, other effective features. Parts of the improved features include an optically variable magnetic image, also known as Spark Live, the enhancement is a glossy, color-changing image of the Kari shell currently on the 10 Ghana CD note. On the 20 CD note, a shiny star will appear, and on the 50 Ghana CD note, a glistening cocoa pod. When the note is tilted, a high-polished line will stretch across each image that will move up and down 
and change color from gold to green. A new security thread called Rapid will be an illuminated broken line that runs horizontally through the note. When tilted, the star will expand and contract while the denomination value stays in place. A more prominent watermark will appear. It will be the image of the Ghanaian agriculturalist Tatakwashi and a cocoa pod. Against light, the watermark will appear transparently on both sides of the note. Head of Public Affairs at Bank of Ghana, Esi Hamon explains what led to the decision to introduce the new notes. You know, the currency management, usually the many years there are apart, you find that um, currency notes are changed, you know, and these are all to build in some durability, make sure they are machine readable. So it will enhance the um, features that we are introducing. A polished gold band with gold bars on the back will be printed on the new banknotes. The iridescent band will stretch from top to bottom and will become visible when held against light. Dairy company Ala Foods Limited has unveiled yet another exciting milk flavor, Dano Coffee. Marketing manager of Ala Foods Limited, Mausi uh, Mawenyefia, said Dano Coffee is an addition to the existing flavored variants to provide more nutritious and, op and options of dairy products. Ghana office of Ala Foods operates with two brands, Dano and Lupak. Ala Foods drives on four health pillars making diary even better, inspiring good food habits and choices, championing diary goodness and making it easier for people to live healthier lives. Unveiling the new product, marketing manager of Ala Foods, Mausi Mawinyafia said, a healthy diet is a requirement for developing healthy citizens, for building a healthy nation. It's basically milk, um, it's flavored milk, um, coffee flavored milk. So um, just as you, you would use your regular milk, you can use it in your beverages if you'd like. You can also take it um, as a standalone, whether hot, whether cold, whichever way. So you can mix it with anything. Managing director of Danu Foods, Fatumata Doro said, the new coffee, three in one variant, is a 40G sachet that is expected to be sold at the same price as the other existing flavors. She encouraged Ghanaians to make dairy nutrition an essential part of their diet. I would tell them that not just about this product, is we are in an era where they have now to think about themselves, think about their health. That's what matters the most. Is as the world is changing, food habits are also changing. They have to make good food choice. And that is more important than anything else. If you are healthy, then you can have a better life. Then you can succeed in what you are doing. So first, say good food choice. And when you think about good food choice, then you will think about done. Because that's what we are equal to. You have three things. The first one is an, it's a healthy and nutritious product. So purely healthy. Like we are a farmer-owned company. So what we can provide to the market, it's something that we can control the quality. We own the full value chain from farm to milk. So we can tell you for any single product in the market where it's coming from, which cow has made this product really. That's the first one. That's the healthy aspect that you have. The second is that it's affordable. If you check what you have in the market, there is no one that can compete us at this pricing. The last one is the taste. We have done a couple of research and you know that we have an amazing product. The initiative is to provide additional diary options for Ghanaians to energize activities that communicate the offer of coffee variants. Chief Executive Officer of MTN Ghana, Selom Adedavo, says the company will intensify customer engagements this year. He gave the assurance at an overview of last year's performance and prospects for the current year in Accra. MTN last year witnessed an increase in subscriber base by 2.3 million. MTN now has a subscriber base of 20.1 million. The company's active data users went up by 1.5 million to 13.5 million. Active mobile money users also went up by 1.3 million to 13.6 million. Mobile money business went up by 34.6%, accounting for 24.8% of its 4.2 billion Ghana cities. Chief Executive Officer of MTN Ghana, Selom Adadevo, commended customers for supporting the company. 
We exceeded 20 million in total customers on the network. Um, again, this is a fantastic feat for us and um, I'm very grateful for the team, but also more grateful to our customers for believing in us and continue to support us as we bring the services to your doorsteps. Selo Madadivo said MTN will continue to place customers at the hearts of its operations. The company outlined a number of innovations, packages and promos to retain and attract more customers. We've dedicated 2019 to be the year of the customer, but we've identified opportunity to do more in terms of our customer. And this spans from several things. In terms of our service delivery, in terms of our products and services, and in terms of our overall strategy, when we highlighted the bright framework, the first pillar was B, which was best in customer experience. And this really speaks to why we've dedicated 2019 to be the year of the customer. General Manager of Capital Projects at MTN Ghana, William Stiti, said the company continues to deliver to their customers to enable them to send money to relatives abroad instantly on their phones. In the middle of this year, all MTN sites will have both 2G and 3G. So we'll be able to do data everywhere at higher speeds. We are also expanding our fiber network. And this year we are connecting uh, we are, uh, 368 kilometers of fiber to all our sites. MTN Ghana listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange on September 5 last year. At the end of December 2018, MTN Ghana's market capitalization was 9.7 billion Ghana cities. This makes MTN the third largest primary listed company on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Management assured customers of improved mobile experience on the MTN network this year and beyond. Well, that's all for the business news segment here on News 360. My name is Parker Siasari. Thanks very much for watching. For more business news stories, you can log on to our website, 3news.com. Over to you, Alfred. Thank you, Pakwasi, with business. The NPP and the NDC are expected to meet on Tuesday, April 9, that's tomorrow, to kickstart the process of disbanding political vigilante groups. Ahead of that, Chairperson of the National Commission on Civic Education, Joseph Nkrumah, is urging the two parties to show good faith in their deliberations on disbanding political vigilante groups. The National Peace Council, NPC, is scheduled to meet the two leading political parties, the New Patriotic Party, NPP, and the National Democratic Congress, NDC, on Tuesday, April 9, to mediate on disbanding political party vigilante groups in the country. The meeting comes after a consensus was reached between the NPP and the NDC to make the National Peace Council mediator. A letter signed by the acting executive secretary of the MPC, George Amu, said the meeting would focus on terms of engagement and grand rules. At the launch of a report on engagement with political parties and other stakeholders on the manners, chairperson of the National Commission on Civic Education, Josephine Nkrumah, said the two political parties must show good faith in the process. In good faith, you should come to the table and find a, a, a roadmap or let's formulate a roadmap to disband it and uproot it from our body to politics. So we say it in every sense of the word that we don't just want the rhetoric that we've heard in the past, but this time round, we have come to a crossroads and it's important that we find real lasting solutions to this and stop the lip service to disbandment. All right, so it's now time for some entertainment and lifestyle news with me, Nana Kwejwadono. Starting off from yesterday night, the Grand Ball President Kufuado has donated 50,000 CDs to support the Aging Musicians Welfare Fund, pledging government's commitment uh, at supporting the creative arts industry. The President, who was at the 8th Music Presidential Grand Ball, also promised uh, to construct a new office complex for the union. My own, see my heart, but she taught at the grind for my game. My own.
The Presidential Musical Grand Ball has for the past six years been used to raise funds for the aging musicians' welfare, which supports musicians who are 60 years and above, incapacitated or dead with surviving relatives. <laughs> of music app by Ose Kufo, also known as Obo, appealed to government to construct a new office for the association to enhance their work. Your Excellency, on behalf of the entire Musicians Union of Ghana, I would like to appeal to you to intervene on our behalf because we know that when the president gives an order, music to be resettled, that order will make Musica become settled in no time. The location of Musica's current office falls within the area marked for the Marine Drive project. President Akufuado promised Musica a new headquarters before the end of the year. I've instructed the Minister for Works and Housing to meet with the leadership of the union and settle on an appropriate re replacement by the end of this year, 2019. President Akufuado, who donated 50,000 cities to support the welfare fund, also pledged government's continued support for the creative arts industry. On our part as government, we're determined to do what we can to sustain the development and growth of music in Ghana. And we'll give the music industry such boost as we can to enable it reach its potential. That is why we're continuing with initiatives to improve the creative arts sector. We have worked to finalize the Creative Arts Bill, which when passed will set up a Creative Arts Fund to provide backing for creative projects. Veteran musicians Professor Kofi Abraham, Asabia Kropa, Chief Abrecherba Kofi Same, Na Amanua of Wulume fame, Pathomas and Koja Kwabwa received Lifetime Achievement Honours. There was an auctioning of special collections of musical works and instruments of some veteran musicians. The occasion was also used to celebrate the 75th birthday of President Ekufuado. A, a, a very beautiful event it was last night. Of course, we're looking forward to that complex. Now, moving on to the second story for tonight. Multiple award winner Fuse ODG is set to thrill patrons with a concert to mark the launch of uh, his much-anticipated second studio album in Accra. According to the Antenna composer, the album titled New African Nation is about the in integrity of Africa and a wake-up call for all to support and promote Africa. He made this comment on a 3FM drive this afternoon. Released on Friday, March 8, 2019, The New African Nation is the second studio project of Fuse ODG after Tina, This Is New Africa, successfully laid down the foundations for the rise of Afrobeat sound worldwide in 2013. <laughs> The 19-track album includes songs like Brefie, Thinking About It, Buame, Quality, among others, and features top local and international artists such as rapper and BET Award winner Sakwadie, singer Muji's Grammy Award winner Ed Sheeran, reggae superstar Damien J.R. Gong Mali, and Jamaican-UK star Stefflin Don. To him, this new project is to support and promote the integrity of Africa and not to make money. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not about money for me, you know, it's about integrity. Like that, you know, it's about um, doing the right thing for our people. I have, I, I've made enough money, mm. you get it, and I'm still making money. Right. So, and when I make music, I make it for the people. You know, I feel like it's time we've, you know, managed to raise the platform and create this energy of love for Africa through Af Afrobeats. Mm. Everybody's interested in Africa now. What are we using this new energy for? We need to use it to build. So this album is about sending a message to our people now, now that we love ourselves. Mm. What are we going to do with it? Of course, yeah, there's yeah. a lot more work to do now. So. The Azonto hitmaker is determined to put together the infectious groove of his previous works with the conscious messages of previous black leaders. 
Definitely this album taps into a lot of different sounds and different vibes. It has the message in there. You know, the first album was Tina, this is New Africa. Now we're doing Nana, New African Nation. And it's about building the nation physically and seeing physical results. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We've been getting some great feedback. And I'm excited to shoot the videos for these songs. The New African Nation album launch concert is slated for April 18 at the Plus 233 Jazz Bar. So definitely looking forward to that album. Of course, this is the new African yeah. nation. And that's how we wrap up entertainment news tonight. Uh, you tell me you like Fuse. No, I, yes, I like the new African nation, yeah. you know, the movement and, his and songs. the vision. It's, it's a good one. And his personalities. Yes. That yeah. was a like. <laughs> oh, well. yeah, but I mean, in the end, I want to say uh, we're, we're grateful for spending your 60 minutes with us here on News 360. My name is Alfred Okanse. And I'm Natalie Ford. For a lot more news, do visit our website. It's 3news.com. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>